Hello guys, welcome back to Custom Gamer. My name is Daz, as it normally is, and this is part two of the cornered map analysis video. If you missed part one, there'll be an annotation on your screen around about nowish. And uh, in part one, we looked at version 0 0.1 to 0 0.4 of this map. And in this version, we're going to look at version 0.5, which, which was the first beta that people could play and then all the changes from 0.5 up until the release version of the map and then we'll talk a little bit about navigation meshes and things I still don't like about this map <laughs> so I will shut up and uh, we will get talking enjoy Okay, so here we are on version 0.5 of the map. This was the beta version, the very first beta that I released that people could download and play. Uh, as you can see, this bit is fully finished now. We've got our shop front, some windows and doors and things like that, just to add a bit of detail. Uh, players can come up here now, you've got the stairs, and they can come around the back here, which brings you back here. And now uh, we've got a little room behind here. Uh, I added this because I was worried that players could just kind of hold up here and only have two directions to worry about when they're defending. So I thought I'd add a, an area back here that players can't get to where zombies can spawn and then climb over this wall to kind of, you know, catch the players unawares and make them move on. Uh, there's actually an area up here where zombies can spawn as well and on the roof here so they can drop down onto the players as well from up here. So I just wanted to find a lot of different angles that zombies can come from. And uh, you can see here, this bit isn't quite fully finished, you can actually see the kind of a uh, bounding block for the level here. And uh, I've added a couple of things just outside the level here. This is because it's always nice to have the map feel larger than it actually is when you're playing. So you can see areas that you can't quite get to. It just makes it feel a bit more realistic, so like having various props it <laughs> Look at this. Didn't actually group these up, so I've, I've obviously moved the uh, crane prop without moving the glass prop that goes in it. <laughs> so yeah, we can see problems already. <laughs> but yeah, um, the point. Uh, yeah, the point I was trying to make is that it's always nice to kind of add a few buildings at the back here. You see, we've got buildings back here. It just makes the map feel more alive. It's not just some enclosed little space that players playing. Uh, let's see, yeah so this bit's all finished now, zombies can spawn back here and climb over this wall as well. Um, they can they can run around here, climb over here and come in that way as well and they can come up here, climb onto the roof here and go down. And we've added this area here as well. So again, um, the map's fully boxed in now basically because I don't want to have any gaping holes that beta testers would complain about. So we've added a little tunnel here as well. You can see if, if you shine your torch down you can actually see where I've blocked it off at the end so in the release version I'll move it back even further so it looks like it, it goes on forever. And uh, We've added this bit here as well. It kind of ends here right now. Um, in the final version it goes back even further because again it just looks like the map just stops here. It just kind of breaks the illusion there a bit. And here as well you kind of tell that the map just ends. It looks really bizarre. Strange that no beaters, beta testers saw this. I didn't get any complaints anyway. Um, and if we go inside, again this is all the same. I think I've moved around a little bit of furniture but no big changes there. And I still haven't added this. Um, I think this was a mistake on my part, not actually completely finishing off the layout before I released the beta. So, you know, you can come in here but it's just a big empty room right now. And uh, Eventually there's a staircase going up here and you can kind of walk around inside this house and come out here. And there's a room in here as well with some shotguns and some windows looking out into here. But yeah, that was kind of a mistake. Um, I shouldn't have really released it in this state. Because yeah, the layout isn't fully complete, you can't really give accurate feedback when the layout isn't complete. So yeah, don't do that, that was a mistake. <laughs> and uh, it's just generally like little bits of detail have been added to the map. Um, tweak the lighting even more, um, lots of cube maps for the reflections, 
just general things like that really uh, just tweaking up kind of these beam effects like this um, a lot of beta feedback I got from the map saying that these these light cones here were way too bright kind of across the whole level you can see they are quite strong I think they're on may maybe maximum uh, FX amount I think it's 255 for these uh, a lot of people said that they look kind of strange kind of way too bright but I kind of like it again I, I think um, it's kind of an artistic thing I just really like the look of the uh, light flares even though it may not, like, may not look realistic that's what I'm trying to say but uh, I just think it looks cool so uh, I did actually just leave them as they were throughout the entire development of the map and it does look kind of cool uh, especially over here with the uh, with the jeep here when zombies run through here it kind of they get caught in the beams and uh, the lighting and the beam effect makes it look really nice so and it also acts as kind of a visibility blocker as well when you're here you c it can be quite difficult to see through them and uh, I kind of like that yeah I've also added in the ambience now, you can hear the rain coming down. Um, I didn't actually get any feedback on this either, but um, it was something I noticed myself during testing when I played the map, is that the constant rain ambient sound, um, it kind of gave me a sort of audio fatigue after a while. Because it's just the same sound loop forever, no matter where you go in the map, you can't get rid of it. Like if you go inside, it's still exactly the same volume, the same sound effect playing. Uh, wherever you go it's exactly the same so uh, what I did in the release version is um, if you go inside here it changes to a different soundscape which is kind of a uh, you know it's more like an indoor sound effect you know you can hear rain outside and uh, I add all sorts of different local ambient sounds so like here like wh wherever there's metal in the map I add kind of like a you know that plinking sound you get when rain hits metal and uh, over here I had an ambient sound of like tarpaulin, rain hitting a tarpaulin sheet, and uh, wherever I could, I just tried to add different rain ambient sounds to kind of break up the uh, the soundscape a bit because it it just gets really annoying after a while. Uh, this area is still the same. Um, I'm actually running around in coop mode at the moment, and so none of the items have spawned correctly, but there are, there are there are health packs here now. And I haven't actually added the light yet to entice players over here. In the final version there's a, a lamp here with some bright lighting to get players to come over there. Okay, so you've seen the map. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through all the feedback I got from the beta version of the map and we're going to look at what people said and what I did to uh, kind of fix the problems they came up with. So let's roll that. Okay, so hi51 says, since it's a beta I won't give a review, but here's some things you should know. In one of the rooms with absolutely nothing in it, <laughs> near the house apartment, there is a white picket fence sticking through the wall and is very oddly visible. There is a mismatched texture in the house apartment in the closet. It would be great if there was more supplies and ammo. It seems that it's just always far enough away from me actually. When I played it there was only one ammo pile. Detail would make it great, but that's more of the look of things, otherwise it was really fun. The ladder next to the start position of the radio bothered me because survivors couldn't climb it and it was to the ground. Either way, it was a really great looking map and would have made a great finale for a campaign. Okay, so the main bit of feedback I took away from that was this ladder actually. Um, I added this so infected could, could climb up to the top to get the survivors because like I mentioned before I was worried that this area would be too strong otherwise but um yeah people thought you could actually climb it when you can't so I actually changed these to drain pipes and here's the uh, ladder sticking through the wall derp like this room wasn't finished so I didn't really worry about that too much alright next up was Phoenix Raven that said it took a long time to work out where the radio is and off the top of my head I still couldn't tell you. So add another radio, or two. One in the security office maybe, and another in the room with the suicide. Nice one on that by the way. Items and ammo are a bit sparsely spread, or is it just me getting lost too much and running around in circles? Again an ammo pile in that security room or a shotgun or two wouldn't go amiss. 
that room's a death trap and that's obvious to tell. <laughs> Some lights seemed overly strong and lightning in the tunnel didn't work so great but that's probably out of your control. Great map but if the above or close to it can be added then it'll really pull its own. Bottom zombie pathing is perfect. Okay so in the beta of the map this was the only start radio. This is what he was talking about about adding more so I added one here on this side of the map and the other one actually exactly where he um he wanted it in the uh the room of the dead person and uh, I really like this because again the map's all about movement and moving around to the different areas to stay stocked up on supplies and the three start radi radios it gives a lot of player choice when you start the map like do I want to start over there do I want to want to start over here if we start over here we can get to this area faster and etc etc so I really like the multiple start radios for that reason. Alright, next up we've got Branzyme, who says in the cons, we'll just read the cons, a building's texture scales off, that's about it. No poster, like loading screen poster. Uh, you may want to use other kind of spotlight entity, there are two, because the ones you're using are naturally white, either that or change the colour of them slightly. And this was the texture he was referring to. It is actually the wrong size. I hadn't noticed this in the beta version. Which is why feedback is so important. You get kind of a snow blind after a while to your own level. And uh, I'm glad he pointed this out because it does look kind of silly now, now that I look at it. <laughs> and uh, if you go into the release version, you can see that I actually removed the windows on the lower bit and doubled the texture scale of the ones up above. And it looks much better. So thank you very much, Branzyme, for pointing that out. I probably would have overlooked it otherwise. And lastly, from Textfish on Funk Message Board, this was actually from the release version of the map. Um, we'll just read the bits that are wrong. Uh, where are we? Yeah, I came across two areas that could do some clipping if you ever decide to release a V2. First is the ventilation unit on the wall of the apartments facing the jeep, which you can get onto by jumping from the fence to the roof of the security hut to the vent. Sometimes the infected get lucky and drop down from it to the roof, but it's quite possible to camp up there and snipe for a good while, and it confuses the hell out of the bots. The second issue is potentially more serious problem on the opposite corner of the map in that little courtyard with ammo and fuel canisters. If you jump on the pile of bin bags and go into the corner you can get stuck behind the lamp sticking out of the wall and have to no clip out. Oh and this broke my heart because this was after I released the final version these bugs popped up. So um, I actually uh, got hold of Textfish here and uh, sent him a couple of uh, updated versions for him to test. This guy is just a bug magnet, he's amazing. Can't thank him enough. Uh, he played through about three or four different versions of the map before I released version 2 and uh, he helped me find so many different bugs, so thank you very much Textfish. He saved my life here. So um, yeah, well, I'll show you some clips about what he's talking about. Okay, so here's the vent he was talking about. You can actually jump from the roof there up onto this vent and uh, there's actually no nav up there for the bots. So they have no idea how to get to you. That includes zombies as well, so they just kind of stand around looking at you while you shoot them all. Uh, occasionally zombies can fall down from the roof like Texfish mentioned, but it's pretty rare. So that was quite a, a map breaking bug there. And this is the uh, light he was talking about that you can get stuck on. Uh, this footage is from the fixed version of the map, so but you can kind of see, you could get stuck behind here, the lamp was further towards the back wall, and you'd actually be stuck in here forever as soon as you got in there. So I just moved it forward a bit and played with the clipping a bit and fixed. And here's the vent from the fixed version of the map, it's higher up and it's got some clipping above it as well, so there's absolutely no way players can get up there now. And I did add a bit of nav to it as well, just in case cover all my bases. <laughs> so yeah, bots can get up there, players can't. Job done! Okay, so here we are in the final 
final, final version of the map, which you can download right now at leffordedmaps.com. <laughs> so, let's have a look at the changes. So, we went through all the feedback that I got in beta. Um, me and Texfish obviously sent a lot of emails to each other while we were doing that final bug testing. So, let's have a look what's different. We've got a Here's the health kits in the alley now. Yeah, that's a death trap with the reward at the end, so that's the reason behind that. We've got more detail here now. We've got all the little bricks on the floor. So again, mis miscellaneous changes to add more detail. All the cube maps are in now and working correctly. I added this in place gun here. I'm going to talk more about this later because I don't really like it. Or hindsight 2020 and all that. So I don't really like this now, but at the time it felt like a good idea. Uh, players can come back here now and get some supplies. Look, again, zombies can climb over this wall and still get you, so it still it still works to kind of force players to move on from here. So I'll start radio. Got a grenade launcher in the tunnel at the end here. You will notice how the ambient sounds change now when I come indoors. So you've got this kind of more subdued effect and then when you travel outside the full rain ambience comes back in. Uh, I don't know if you can be able to hear it on the video but the sound kind of changes here with the tarpaulin sheet. Now if you come up here you'll probably hear the, the metal sound. I don't know, it's kind of hard to hear. I can barely hear it myself. <laughs> but yeah, that's all in and working now. Uh, I can show you this final area that I've finally got around to building for the final version. Again, we've added a bit more detail in this room now. It's all fully working. So I, I hid that bit of fence here with a, a wall because I couldn't actually move it out any further if we have a quick look around here. You can see if I'd moved it back further it would have stuck out the edge here, which would have been just as bad. <laughs> so I had the imp rise there. So yeah, you can come up here now. And you can look out there. Again, it's in here with the gun case. PC which you can destroy. Again, this room's a bit of a death trap as well, there's only one way in and out. <laughs> yeah, so that's the full map, you've seen it all now. Another thing I did add was uh, a way for zombies to come from the roof of the building down inside without having to run all the way around. They can actually drop down from the back here, let me know, clip. There's a hole in the roof here that they can come down from and then jump down here. That's kind of, it's, it's just a shorter route to get to the player basically. It was taking too long before you could kind of sit in here for ages. That is that. Got the bathroom fully finished now. Some, a few extra details in here. Can't actually get out there. You see this area goes all the way back now. And some more little bits of environmental storytelling here which I've added. I crashed cars on the motorway. I'll just no clip forever now. So and you can see it actually comes all the way back to here now. And again we've got some more buildings at the back here as well just to make the map feel a little bit bigger than it actually is. And we've added some buildings here as well. You can actually see if we come back here. It's all just smoke and mirrors. There's no actual faces behind here. It's I only need to show what the player can see. I'll do a couple of incidental props just to make sure it doesn't look completely square back here. Um, a few more bits and bobs. We've got some more detailing on here now, some more vents and things like that. And if you go inside, so we've just got some more detail inside here on the roof. Various props and things like that. I also did a quick 
kind of visual effects pass, if you will. Um, added some rain splashes in the water here. Kind of added them wherever there's water going, I kind of added rain splashes like this. It's a nice little effect. And uh, if we go over this area, I added some some slight fogging in this area as well. And again, you've got the rain splashes too. And here's that health pack I was talking about earlier, the light. So in from back here you can kind of see the light and you think, ooh, what's over there? Go and check it out. And we added a few more buildings at the back here because I don't know if you noticed in the last video, but there's just kind of a big hole here. You can almost see to the back of it and it just looked like it wasn't really finished. So I added a couple more just basic little buildings to the back here just to make it feel a bit more alive. He does a good job. To tweak this a bit, put another warm light here and items on the table rather than having just stuff lying on the floor. Ammo pile here now. I did I did add a lot of items and ammo piles after you know a lot of the beta feedback was that I couldn't find items and ammo and things like that. So I did actually add a fair amount of new items and things like that to the map. Um, if you watch part one, you'll, no you'll notice that uh, I kind of complained about this area not being able to get up easily. So I just kind of added a mudslide bit here that you can just walk straight up now instead of doing that silly little jump. I added a bit of water collecting in as well, just a nice little visual effect there. Because having to jump up here, it just felt just felt broken. So I wanted to add something where you can just walk up. And again, there's a few more miscellaneous details around here just to add a bit of detail. In general, I'm, I'm not, I wasn't really happy with this area. It just felt kind of bland. wasn't really anything going on here. I also changed this area here so you can actually bypass the water and walk straight up. So, that, like I mentioned in part one, the beta testers were getting annoyed that they had to walk through the slow water every time they wanted to come up here. So now you can just avoid it. So it's kind of like a punishment thing, like it's obvious that it's there if you're walking it and you get slowed down. But you can avoid it if you just watch where you're going. So I've added a lot more detail here now as well. Got some random bookcases and things like that, things on the walls, just to break up the wall detail a bit. It was a bit boring before. And I've added some more pickups here as well that players can get. It's always nice if you can tell a little bit of a story with item pickups like this, if it's just one or two in the environment, like this guy went down fighting, this guy kind of didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but like ha having um, pickups just kind of resting against models like this, it, it's just a nice little touch you can do to make it feel like they're not just like spinning pickups in the world like old school games. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but it doesn't really work in Left 4 Dead. <laughs> And the other main thing I worked on a lot on the final version was my uh, optim map optimization. Uh, if I just enter a few commands here, there we are. so this, these white squares here are the area portals that you can see in this part of the map. As you see, as I open the door, it renders the rest of the world. So area portals are a great way to kind of close off segments of the world from each other so that they're not rendered while you're inside here. In fact, it's probably easier if I just uh, if I turn on wireframe mode. There we go. So you can see, as soon as I open this, it's not actually rendering anything behind this door apart from the skybox. As soon as I open the door, it renders the world outside. And the great thing about this is that as you walk closer to the area portal, it will render more. And then as you get further right, it'll actually start rendering less. So they're a really great optimization technique that you can use for areas like this. The trick is that you can't you can't rely on these. These are not exactly reliable methods of visibility culling because as soon as you shoot a hole through the door, they cease to work. I mean, they still they still they still cull objects around the area portal, but they never close completely. In here, you'll see as soon as I open the door, it renders the world. 
and uh, I use this here and the uh, let me turn off Wi-Fi mode so you can actually see where I am. <laughs> so the great for kind of um, indoor areas going into outdoor areas like that. And also use them here in the tunnel tunnel entrances. If I turn on wireframe mode here you'll see it actually cuts off quite a lot of detail like. There's actually a hint brush here as well going diagonally like this. You see it's since I tr travel across the 45 degree angle here. So that's partly the hint brush working but also the area portal helps a lot as well. Uh, another thing I did was use the fo the far clip plane. You can use this with fog. If your fog des density goes to fully fogged at maximum range, you can use a far Z clip plane, which will cut geometry off after that after the fog gets thick enough, so you won't actually notice it. So if you see here as I move forwards, the polygons and models will start to be rendered, and then they'll be cut out as the fog covers them up. And this this is all fully controllable by uh, by the uh, fog controller in your map. So that's a great optimization technique for outdoor areas. As you can see, it it hides quite a lot of detail, and uh, the pl you don't really notice it's happening because the fog covers it up. As you can see. Okay, so let's have a look at navigation mesh now. As as I mentioned in part one, this is probably the most important part of a Left 4 Dead map. Uh, you know, after the layout, it affects the gameplay the most because it affects the zombie and bot navigation. So if I just turn on my script here, here we go. So this is what all the AI in the map uses to get around. And uh, these kind of light blue connections here are two-way, so zombies can climb up here and drop down and the dark blue connections are drop down only or one way only depending on how you connect them up so you can kind of control where Hello. zombies go like that so if we just have a look around the map you can kind of see there's nav up here so zombies can climb up and down this wall to get over it here as well if we go down here you can see zombies can spawn up here on this bridge and then they can drop down onto the road below. See there's, there's one way connections here because we don't want zombies trying to get up here once they're down. So that's a great way you can kind of, once zombies come out of an area, they won't try and get back there if you just do one way connections all the time. It's a great way to kind of control how they move around the map. And again up here we've got zombies can spawn on the roof here and it's just all one-way connections going down so they won't, will never try and get back up you can see they can come down here this is how they get into the uh, flat Anybody area and uh, it, it takes a long long time to to kind of tweak this and get it working correctly kind of it's a bit messy here with this, uh, all these rock models down there there we go, sorry I've got to turn my torch on. But yeah, it can, it can get looking a bit crazy at times. Um, again, this is my first Left 4 Dead map, so maybe maybe some veteran Left 4 Dead maps are looking at this and going, ooh, that's not good. But uh, I was just kind of learning this as I went along, uh, just trying to do the best job I could. So you've got the ladders here, and you have to mark a nav that the zombies have to be standing in before they can come up these ladders. Got here. Hello. And uh, when you generate a nav for your level, there's there's lots of ways you can go about it. Um, there there is an auto generate function where it will just generate a, a nav for your entire level and try and work out where where the bots can get to. But uh, I found that generates a lot of problems. So using the uh, incremental generation and then tweaking it seems to work best. Okay, well, that just about covers it, guys. You've now seen how I made this map. 
Um, I just want to end with <laughs> some things that, that have come up that I still dislike about this map. Uh, it's kind of strange because when I released it I was very happy with it. I thought, yeah, it's well done, good job. I uh, released it after fixing the bugs in the first release of course. And uh, I figured that would be it and uh, I was very happy with it. But coming back to it a few months later and looking at it and recording these videos it, it's amazing how many more problems you find when you when you look at it with fresh eyes after a time um, so I'm going I'm to go through a few of the things that I've found um, who knows may, maybe I'll release uh, another update at some point to this map but uh, the first one is this this uh, gun here um, I think if I was going to do another version I'd probably just remove it entirely because what I've found it does for players is that they see this in place gun and then they they think that this area is the holdout area because it's got a gun here and there's not a gun anywhere else in the map so it kind of defeats the uh, objective of having players moving around the map at all times they feel that they have to stay here and use this gun or at least most of them do and uh, it kind of makes defending this area very easy this area is still very strong so you can just put one person on this gun and they can defend this whole area and then you've got say two people here and then maybe one checking around the back here for any surprises and it just becomes very very easy to survive in this area you can survive for a very long time so I would probably Hello. remove this gun and perhaps even add another route uh, maybe like a manhole or something here which zombies can come out of so they can appear right next to players here so that's one thing I've noticed that I would probably change uh, the next thing is, it's kind of a, a scripting error that I've found, is that, um, well actually let's do this other thing first because it's kind of directly related, the, uh, the text hints I've got for the start radios are actually using the wrong entity, they're actually using the game instructor entity, so when I turned off game instructor hints to record this video I noticed that the press the radio to start message that pops up above these disappears as well. So I'd say that's a that's that's a bug I've just found literally about ten minutes ago when I started Anybody recording this segment. Me? And uh it's I guess a lot of people have turned off the uh the instructor as this game's getting on a bit now. So uh, it becomes very hard to find the radios when there's no hints telling you where they are. Um Yeah, I'm actually using the wrong en wrong entity for it. There's another one I need to use, so I will have to change that. And uh, related to that, uh, the way the uh, the game hints here are actually set up, when you press one of them it disables the other two in the map, but rather than using a uh, logic relay to do that, it actually directly, directly targets the other two uh, entities from this radio, and the same with this one. So I had to set up target names for every single radio rather than just pointing to one relay. You guys hear me? And I've actually messed up one of them, so even when you start the map, this radio over here still has its press start to begin message on it, which is really annoying. I mean, that, that's my Achilles heel really, is uh, input, output and scripting, things like that. My head just does not do it very well. It's one thing I keep meaning to improve, but yeah, so that's another thing I found which is doing my head in. And uh, Another one, is, it's kind of small things, but things I've noticed is that if we turn on the nav mesh here, it's like there are, there are still nav squares here with no connections on them, which can confuse bots. So uh, if you see the purple, the purple line here in uh, your nav mesh, it just means that there's no connections going to uh, to these nav mesh squares. So if bots if bots get stuck on here, they can get stuck, which can really screw you over. So again, you'll notice these Anybody these connections go down onto here, but they're only one way, so there's actually no way off here once bots get there. And I've actually found a couple of these in the map. I mean, on these ones it's okay because I don't want bots to get up there, but it, uh, those ones could be a problem. Uh, another problem I noticed is that with the fuzzy clip plane here, you can kind of see you can see buildings pop in right there. So obviously the Farsi clip plane uh, either isn't back far enough or... I think the issue might be more with the skybox because uh, 
you can, you can see if you look kind of into the foggy area here at the bottom, it blends in just fine. But as the skyboards get brighter, gets brighter, you can see you can see the pop in very noticeably, and it looks really ugly. So I'm not sure what I could do to fix that. Maybe the sky dome could be raised a bit so you have more of this foggy colour. But yeah, it's uh, it's quite nice what I am with these these buildings back here. You can see it a bit as well there. Uh, I mean, it's not it's not map breaking, but it's just kind of an ugly thing that I don't really like. Yes, that's another thing. Now, I suppose the final thing that I dislike is the uh, this room here. Um, this is actually the first version I built of this this little house here, and uh, I never actually. <laughs> never actually went around and detailed it up properly so it's a bit bland in here. I added a couple of props and decals to kind of spice it up a little bit. It's still very dull. It really needs some more detail. But yeah, I can't believe I never actually got around to finishing it. Yes. <laughs> okay, so I think I'm going to pack this up then guys. Um, I really hope you've enjoyed this set of videos. Uh, please leave a comment let me know if I could have done anything better. If there's anything I missed that you wanted to know about, let me know. I can always do follow-up videos. And uh, please please like and share out this video if you, if you think others might be interested. It really does help out the channel a lot, and I appreciate it to every single one of you. Hey -o! Oh, be quiet. <laughs> Alright guys, I'm signing off. See you next time.